So I talk a lot about increasing your earning potential in life, and I came up with these four levels of earning potential in reflection of my own career as an accountant and as a consultant over the past decade. I think this is a great framework to always keep in mind when you're thinking about making money, but you know, just in speaking about self-development and wanting to be better and wanting to learn how to be better. So I'm gonna dive deep into these four levels, how I've applied them into my life, what reflections I've learned from them in the past, decade and what things I've come across along the way and also how I'm going to use this framework to move forward and get myself to the next level. Level one is some sort of technical skill as an individual contributor. So for most people, this is what they went to school for. So maybe you went to school for trades, you went to school for engineering, you went to school for finance, you went to school for interior design, for fashion. So for myself, I have a business degree with a major in accounting. I also worked in management consulting and I also worked in industry as a controller. If you're wondering, well, I didn't go to school to get technical skills, that's okay. Nowadays with the internet, there are options for everyone. It doesn't have to necessarily be traditional skills that you learn in schools. So even if you can't go back in time to get technical skills from school, there are many high income skills on the internet related to social media that don't require traditional education for you to be perceived as an authority. So this could be high ticket closing, copywriting, video editing, social media, content creation. There are a lot of things that you can do. Nowadays, I know that kids in their early 20s, they're going to school, they're building online businesses at the same time. Unfortunately, you know, someone who's a little bit older as a millennial, we didn't have these opportunities when we were younger. There are so many ways nowadays with internet and social media that people can learn skills and make money online. So whatever it is, your technical skill, that's kind of like your thing. The one thing that you're really good at based on your own personality, based on your own history and skill set, and just your own life background and your own experience. There are usually like that one or two things that people are naturally really, really talented at. So that's level one, technical skills at an individual contributor level. Level two is management and leadership skills and also to a certain extent, operational skills. So for myself, after I got my CPA, I started to learn more softer skills, presentation, project management, leadership, how to run a team, how to deliver projects, how to deliver high quality work as a team, manage other people, manage your own time and priorities, and then coach other people to manage their time and priorities as they're developing in their career. So level two is very much being able to influence other people at a coaching manager or an executive level. This requires you to understand people a little bit better, understand how to say things to influence other people, change management, being able to influence other people as a coach at a managerial or an executive level is a really important skill to have and it's a big part of level two. One thing I learned when I worked in corporate and I had my own team is that most people do hate change. So from a change management perspective, I had to learn how to communicate very directly and clearly about how change will directly benefit or impact a person because people care about themselves first and foremost and what's in it for them. And most people don't like change. So, so from a change management perspective, it's very important to explain how change will positively benefit someone's work life or life in general. Another part of level two is learning how to coach people, how to build a 12 to 24 month plan for someone so that they grow when they work with you, which also makes people want to be around you because you care and are invested in their growth. When it comes to people management level two, it also includes learning how to hire people, learning how to conduct interviews, learning how to identify talent quickly and be able to assess a person's talent level by seeing their work and then learning where the gaps exist in their skill level and what they need to work on to be able to develop to get to the next level and being able to come up with you know, a short-term plan for them to show them what that next level looks like. A part of level two is also understanding processes and how to improve processes, how to delegate, how to outsource, how to train, how to systemize, create SOPs. Yeah, I think one of the most important and underrated skills by far and most significant skills that people as young adults learn in the workplace is basically how to become a manager, how to become a leader, and how to become someone that other people want to listen to and that want to work for you or be around you. And being a good people manager and a good leader really requires a deep understanding of people, the psychology of people and how to influence people and persuade people um, of your vision of things. Level three is sales and marketing. So a lot of people don't like sales and marketing. I remember back in the day when I thought that I was too good to learn sales and marketing. Why would I ever have to learn sales and marketing if I make money with my brain? 
And unfortunately, that mentality, you know, basically kept me from earning more money. And I had to force myself to understand that no one is too good to do anything. And learning sales and marketing is truly one of the highest ROI activities and knowledge in life that you can add to your tool belt, especially if you already have level one, which is your technical skill and what you do at an individual contributor level and level two, your managerial skills. Sales and marketing is a very high ROI activity. If you're a business owner, you got to learn sales and marketing, right? Otherwise it's just not really going to work. I guarantee you that almost everything that you think about sales and marketing and any sort of hesitation that you have towards sales and marketing, it really just is a limiting belief that you can overcome. If your level one skill was not in sales and marketing, this can be a pretty steep learning curve. For example, I came from an accounting background. I decided to become a coach and I had to learn the whole world of sales calls, closing, sales and marketing in general, content creation. I understand why there is an aversion to sales because people dislike like being sold to and they generally distrust salespeople. But on the flip side, people also love to spend money. They love to spend money to fix their problems. They love to spend money so much that 70% of people live paycheck to paycheck. That's how much people love to spend money to solve their problems. So from a sales and marketing perspective, learning how to tap into that part, learning how to position yourself so you're like Apple rather than you're a greasy salesperson trying to you know, offer free hand cream samples at the mall kiosk. That is a steep learning curve. If you're the best in the world at fashion design, if you're the best in the world at interior design, but nobody knows who you are and nobody knows that you're the best at what you do, you don't know how to price a product or service, you're always, you know, gonna be limited in what you can achieve. Sales and marketing is like the creme de la creme. It's like the icing on the cake that when you skill stack with some other technical skill can help you make so much more money. So a part of sales and marketing is understanding how to communicate in a way to understand people's pain points, understanding how to communicate with a buyer, understanding how to communicate an offer to your prospective customer or client, understanding how to find demand, how to find product market fit. Because if you have level one and level two, and then you add the sales and marketing, it's like a one, two punch. A person that went to fashion design school that understands sales and marketing, that person is going to start an e-commerce store or a fashion brand. A person that went to school for engineering that learns sales and marketing, that person is going to build a crazy software product with a subscription based pricing model, right? The sales and marketing skills will allow that person to get funding from investors. So skill stacking is extremely powerful. Nowadays, I talk to a lot of accounting firm owners and partners, and most of them I know are not into sales and marketing, but even spending a little bit of time to improve and invest in marketing, to spend that time to improve your closing skills, to spend the time to learning how to market, speak and sell to a niche, learning market sophistication, buyer awareness, just knowing these things as an accounting firm owner will allow them to stop having to rely on business development activities and referrals for business or, you know, stuff left to grow their business organically. The final level is level four, which is brand building or content creation. Being able to distribute what you know using the internet and building a personal brand, creating content for other people and being online on all the platforms um, is extremely powerful and allows you to have a lot of leverage and impact people on a big scale. Nowadays with ChatGPT and technology, a lot of things are replaceable. A lot of skills are replaceable, but the only thing that's not replaceable is you as a person, your life experiences and the way that you speak and explain things. When ChatGPT first came out, I remember thinking, man, this is going to be tough for the younger generation. How is the younger generation ever going to learn how to think critically if they have ChatGBT? But in the past couple of months, I've met some insanely crazy young kids in their early 20s that are crushing it in online business. And, and it's kind of reframed the way that I think about ChatGBT. And you know, it's really that ChatGBT and technology is just allowing kids to become smarter and smarter these days. So brand building. If you sell fitness clothes and you build a personal brand, you can charge a premium and increase your gross margin on your clothes just because you have a following. There is really nothing that's more powerful than a personal brand in this decade. And you know, just thinking back, like I personally wouldn't even touch or go near anything related to physical inventory unless there was a personal brand behind it. Because like anything else, it just ends up being commoditized. So brand building is how people stay non-commoditized in today's era. 
And brand building is basically the only thing that can't be outsourced because you can pay for someone to help you with things related to your business. You can hire people to help you with sales. You can hire people to help you with ops, but nobody can replace you when it comes to filming videos or recording podcasts. You can even farm out Instagram posts. So no matter how successful of a business owner you are, I think being able to create some time in your calendar for content creation, for brand building is you know, one of the highest leverage activities that you can do. If you like this video, you're gonna like another related video of mine where I talk about all of the things I've learned from all the books I've read about making money and getting rich. Let me know down in the comments what you liked about this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Till next time.